So what are some things we're going to talk about today? So we're going to learn about cholesterol and its connection to heart health, some harmful habits, which can lead to high cholesterol, the role of nutrition. There's a very, very large role of nutrition when it comes to cholesterol and then healthy recipes. I always like to end off with healthy recipes that are, you know, to promote healthy cholesterol levels. So introduction to cholesterol. So what is cholesterol? It's a substance. It's, it's actually really a hormone, a substance the body needs to build cells, vitamins, and hormones. So our body does need cholesterol. We don't want no cholesterol. Um, it's just about finding that sweet spot and that perfect number and the perfect ratio. So why is it a problem? So too much cholesterol increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, which is another word for heart disease. And are there different types of cholesterol? And the answer is yes, there are two types of cholesterol. So there's LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. And when it comes to nutrition, I actually usually don't like to use the word good and bad, but there's really, this is exactly the way to look at it as it pertains to cholesterol. There's LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, and there's HDL, which is the good cholesterol. And the way that you can remember that is the L is we want it to be lower, the bad cholesterol, and HDL, we want that one to be a little bit higher. That's a good cholesterol. So without a healthy heart, all of our body systems would fail. And it's really true. The heart is really probably the single most important organ. I mean, all of our organs are important. They all work together very well, but our heart is really just something that helps keep all of the other organs functioning. So what are some harmful habits? habits. So we're going to cover which lifestyle choices and foods lead to high cholesterol. So how does saturated fat relate to cholesterol? There used to be a time a few years back that people used to think dietary cholesterol is what caused an increase in serum cholesterol. And serum cholesterol is another word for the cholesterol that's moving around our body and our bloodstream. There used to be this belief that a dietary cholesterol would increase serum cholesterol. That has been debunked. And actually, a dietary cholesterol has been taken off of the most recent food labels, which you'll notice if you look at any food label nowadays, dietary cholesterol has been taken off and there's more of a focus on fats and saturated fats. And saturated fats is actually really what is going to increase this HDL or this bad cholesterol. So what are some sources of saturated fats? So we have coconut oil, which is actually a source of um, saturated fat. So people seem to think that there's this like, there is like a health benefit to coconut oil. And there is because it's what we call a medium chain triglyceride. So it is a little bit easier to digest than these long chain fatty acids, but it is still a source of saturated fat. And that's why I put this in here because I do want people to know that when we look at these like, you know, healthy desserts that all are, you know, using high amounts of coconut oil, it's important to know that we can use it and it can be a better source of an oil for baking in some ways because it is this medium chain triglyceride, but it still is a source of saturated fat. So it's important to know that. Um, dairy products, also have saturated fat. This is not me telling you not to have dairy products because there are a lot of health benefits to dairy, but it is a source of saturated fat. So it's important to know that. And red meat, red meat is also a source of saturated fat. I'm also not here to tell you to completely cut red meat out of your diet, but it is important to look for leaner cuts, extra lean ground beef, important to look for things like that, which will lower that level of saturated fat. So risk factors and lifestyle choices, increase LDL and decrease HDL. So again, we want a higher HDL and a lower LDL, and we want to make sure we have a good ratio. So being inactive, right? Not partaking in any sort of physical activity, this can be very, very detrimental and can increase LDL um, as well as decrease HDL cholesterol. A poor diet, smoking, genetics, unfortunately, definitely plays a role as well. Diabetes, diabetes can definitely increase LDL cholesterol, more so non-managed diabetes. I want to say that people that do have diabetes that manage it very, very well, will not see this increase in LDL and a decrease in HDL, but those who don't manage it properly will start to see this, uh, as well as obesity. Obesity is a very, very high correlation between obesity and an increase in LDL cholesterol. So what are some things that fall under this umbrella of cardiovascular disease? And this is what the long-term consequence of high cholesterol is, uh, is what they call cardiovascular disease, CVD, you might see for short. So there's atherosclerosis, which is like the plaque building up in the arteries, coronary heart disease, stroke, heart attack, and heart failure. We're looking at these words and we're looking 
that these diseases and these are very, very big, you know, scary things that can happen. So it's not just, you know, small consequences. These are very, very large, big consequences. So what is the role of nutrition? So add foods in your diet to promote low cholesterol or more specifically low LDL cholesterol levels. So what are some things that will promote low LDL cholesterol? So omega-3 fatty acids, soluble and insoluble fiber, and antioxidants. These are only some examples and many of these categories can overlap. So omega-3 fatty acids, it's important to note that not only can it help lower LDL cholesterol, but it actually will also help increase HDL cholesterol, which is what we want. Some of these other foods, some of these other properties like the soluble and insoluble fiber and antioxidants, they will help lower LDL cholesterol, but they may not help increase HDL cholesterol. Omega-3 fatty acids is the only one that actually will help do both. So it's a really, really, really important nutrient to make sure that we're getting in our diet. And we'll obviously go through some examples of what, you know, constitute as omega-3 fatty acids. And if you feel as though you're not getting enough of these nutrients in your diet, I really recommend you speak to your doctor or to a dietitian to see if a supplement is something that is worthwhile you taking, because it is really, really important that we are getting enough omega-3 fatty acids to really help, again, keep that ratio at a good ratio. So now we look at soluble versus insoluble fiber. So both are important for health promotion and disease prevention. So soluble fiber, we find it very often in nuts, seeds, and legumes. And what this does is it slows down digestion and it keeps us feeling fuller for longer and it aids in gut and cardiometabolic, which is, you know, heart health. Insoluble fiber is found primarily in vegetables and in whole grains, and this speeds up digestion and promotes digestive regularity and adds bulk to stool. So both are very, very important. And what essentially these fibers both do for lowering LDL cholesterol is that when the fiber gets into our bloodstream, it actually takes out some of the cholesterol from our bloodstream, takes out some of that serum cholesterol and gets rid of it through our stool. Um, and that's why fiber, both insoluble and soluble fiber are very, very important in making sure A, to keep us regular, but also to help our LDL cholesterol a little bit lower. Soluble and insoluble fiber. So again, it lowers LDL cholesterol. It helps balance blood sugar. So also very important for diabetes management. It lowers blood pressure and it promotes a healthy weight. So there's a lot of really, really good benefit to soluble and insoluble fiber. And again, some examples are legumes. So beans, lentils, peas. We have things like berries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, as well as whole grains. So oats, barley, brown rice, things of that sort. So now we're going to get to omega-3 fatty acids. And this is super, super important, as I mentioned before. So again, if you feel like you're not getting enough of this in your diet, I very much recommend that you talk to a healthcare professional to see if supplementation is necessary for you, um, because this will decrease LDL cholesterol, but this will also increase HDL cholesterol. This will help protect our arteries, and this will generally reduce inflammation um, in the heart and the surrounding areas. So fatty fish, right? So not every fish, but fatty fish. So salmon, certain sardines, mackerel, cod, these are fattier fish, and these are very, very good sources of omega-3 fatty acid. And actually the skin, which contrary to poultry, the skin has a lot of this omega-3 fatty acids, and that's actually the best part. So some people who love like a crispy skin on a fish, it's actually very, very good for you, um, because that's what really contains a lot of this omega-3 fatty acid. So nuts also, and seeds, so almonds, pistachios, walnuts, black seed, chia seed, hemp seed. I'm a really big proponent component of putting black seed or chia seed or hemp seed into smoothies on cereal on yogurt in sauces soup, anywhere you can kind of get them in because it's such an easy way to add omega-3 fatty acids. And all it really does is add bulk to your whatever you're making. I love chia pudding also. So these are very, very easy ways to help increase the intake of omega-3 fatty acids in our diet. Unfortunately, most people actually don't get enough of it. So it's really something to keep in mind. So we don't mm -hmm. only want the low LDL cholesterol, that's important, but we also want a good level high of HDL, HDL cholesterol. Mm -hmm. We want a high HDL. So don't think, oh, you know, I'm not getting enough of these, you know, omega-3 fatty acids, but it's fine because my LDL is low. Do want to make sure that we're having a good high level of HDL cholesterol as well. Eggs yep. such a bad rep when it comes to cholesterol in specific. The yolk does have saturated fat, which is why it gets this bad rep. Back in the day when people were so focused on dietary cholesterol, people would say, oh, it's high dietary cholesterol, it's high dietary cholesterol. That's not what was causing the high serum cholesterol. It's the saturated 
fat. For people mm. who have high cholesterol, I recommend not eating the yolk more than once per week. Or if you're making two eggs, do one egg with the yolk, one egg without the yolk, you know, a few times a week. But but for people who don't have high cholesterol, there's no reason to avoid the yolk because there are so many good nutrients in the yolk. And vitamin D is one of them, which is a very, mm. very hard vitamin to get through food. But eggs, the egg yolk does contain vitamin D. So I definitely recommend not avoiding the yolk if we don't have high cholesterol. So now we're at healthy recipes. It's interesting because most of the time when we cook things, it loses nutritional value. And we're definitely losing certain things in nutritional value when we're cooking tomatoes, but we actually are increasing the amount of lycopene. There still is lycopene in just a raw tomato, mm -hmm. but cooking it for some reason just brings it out a little bit more. Okay, so a quick guide to oil. So I like to go through this because people always have questions about oil. So vegetable oil, so like canola, rapeseed, peanut, corn, soybeans, these are very high in saturated fats. So we really want to limit them as much as possible. If we are frying something, which again, we can do in moderation, I would probably use one of those fats because avocado oil, not only is it expensive to use a lot of for frying, but it will change the taste of that food. So again, use it as little as possible. But if we are really frying, deep frying something, that's what I would add. And I'm really not here telling you to deep fry often, but if you are going to do it a little bit, that's fine. Um, coconut oil, moderately high in saturated fat. It may have beneficial what we call these medium chain triglycerides, which does make it a little bit easier to digest, but it still is a source of saturated fat. So we really should use this in moderation. Extra virgin olive oil, it contains heart healthy mono unsaturated fat. And it's best for using raw or cooking at low temperatures. We don't want to use this cooking in high temperatures because it burns quickly. It has what we call a low smoke point. So it will burn your food quickly. And avocado oil, it contains heart healthy mono unsaturated fat. And this is best for cooking at high temperatures. So for sauteing, or if you're putting something in the oven at a higher temperature, avocado oil will be a very good healthy option. But do keep in mind, avocado oil is probably the most expensive of all of these. As it's definitely my oil of choice, but I don't like to use a lot of it at a time. So our first recipe is a warm lentil and potato salad. So we have some olive oil, some onion, potato, we have lentils, right, which is those legumes, some water, salt, pepper, cinnamon, and turmeric, which are all really great spices, you know, heavy antioxidants and anti-inflammation properties and things of that sort. So you're going to add the olive oil, saute the onions, add the remaining ingredients. We bring it all to a boil, reduce to a simmer. We want to make sure the lentils are soft, right? That's how we want to eat the lentils. We want to make sure that they're not hard. The lentils and the potatoes are soft, going to be about 20 minutes or so. And we can add another protein if we want, but remember lentils are a good source of plant-based protein. So it's great. And you want to serve this and this can last in the fridge for a few days. It's a very good side dish. It's a good thing to add to a salad to bulk up a little bit. Super, super delicious and easy. How is this helpful for low cholesterol? So the lentils and potatoes are both good sources of fiber. The extra olive oil has a monounsaturated fat that we just spoke about. The cinnamon and turmeric are anti-inflammatory as well as antioxidants. And the onions are anti-inflammatory antioxidants. And they're also prebiotics. So that can also promote lower cholesterol. That's my recipe.